oh hello every time i think i'm out they pull me back in said uh in one mafia movie was it godfather or was it goodfellas can't remember the reason i'm saying this awful bad quoted reference is because I thought I'd kind of done with beepers. I'd had uh, beepers that work on like an accelerometer about when they go off the Hellgate and the very many copies of those ones um, and I was going to do a bit of a, a beeper roundup but then um, Nishmol with the, the guys that came up with the original drone keeper mini and then followed up with the micro said hey we've got another one out do you want to look at it and I was like yeah because basically they'd done something different I've got the product here. Now, the I have to say the original, the Drone Keeper Mini, is my favourite and is the one I generally put on quads because it's you charge it up, uh, you turn it on and you don't have to think about it anymore. And that was the original. That's the Mini. The problem they had was they had a big restriction of, of shipping LiPo batteries out of South Korea where they're based. Then they came out with the Micro. To try and get around the battery problem, they made it so you had to unscrew it and put this little... You could either use this rechargeable cell, the button cell, or a sort of disposable one. But if you used the rechargeable one, you had to uh, buy a separate charger for it to, to make it work, and it was all a bit of pain. I really liked the fact it was strong, but I didn't tend to use it. Since that time, of course, there have been uh, other people coming out. The, uh, the Buzzy Boo from T-Beacon there, the Russia one, almost the same looking thing, but uh, some pretty advanced features about what can happen. Nishmol have bounced back and they've made some significant improvements with what they did. There's still a restriction on LiPo batteries, but what they've done, they've basically put the, this very much looks like the, the Mini again, or like the Buzzy Boo, but they've gone ahead and put the cell battery container in here, but they have included the charging circuit with it. So you've got this USB socket where you can charge it or you can use this USB cable and plug it into a servo lead and you know it will charge there. They've also fixed it so you can do the setup. Previously you had to buy this little wand or you had to make one to do it and now it's a case of touching various bits of it to actually make it work. But um, let's have a bit more of a close up and I'll put a coin cell in and we'll see how this uh, works. Okay, welcome to the wonderful world of close-ups where I've got the little Drone Keeper Mini 2. I've put my cell battery in it. Now this is an LIR1254 rechargeable cells. One thing to note is that you must use a rechargeable cell. You can't, like the previous one, use the one use throwaway things. So this depends on having a certain amount of voltage and it depends on being able to charge it. Uh, when you switch it on, you get three, well, in this case, three beeps. There's there's actually three different things it's beeping for. The first beep indicates it's in wireless mode. Uh, two beeps there would mean wired, and that's when you'd have a PWM value going into there via this lead. But um, wireless is what I'm using it for, and this is probably the way you'd be working it on quads. The second beep, and these are the default values, is how long um, it will go without movement before it starts beeping which is set to 30 seconds by default and the final single beep denotes how long it will go before it just starts beeping anyway so this is the situation where people say oh well what happens if your quad's stuck in a tree and it's swinging around and the accelerometer's moving and that by default is 20 minutes so a couple of things to show here if we were to plug it in the usb which i cannot see in my viewfinder so bear with me and then turn it off we just get this single light for charging. So it's clever enough to say, oh, okay, I'm being charged from USB, so I won't start going off when that happens, which is pretty useful, actually, because when you're just having it plugged in and it's going off every 30 seconds, it's no, no fun at all. So let's talk about changing the modes then. If we turn it on, we plug in this little lead they gave us, and what we've got on the reverse here is we've got... I don't know if that's going to focus. I'll, I'll have to try and give a close-up if not. But basically, on these little tiny capacitors, that one says mode, that one says time. And to change the modes, what you do is you take the black ground and you just tap it. If I was to change the mode to um, wired mode, that's now in wired mode. So probably the one you'd use more is the timer mode. So we can change the timer by just 
touching this thing and we get two beeps, three beeps, four beeps, five beeps and then back to one beep. What those beeps mean, if it's one beep 30 seconds, two beeps a minute, three beeps three minutes, four beeps five minutes, five beeps eight minutes. So in normal flying I might actually set this to three minutes because um, occasionally I'm sat on the ground for a little bit longer um, and when I'm sort of searching for stuff it, you know I don't I don't mind waiting around for three minutes if the batteries come out um, I just don't want to have the thing where it goes off when I don't want it to now to set the other thing what you have to do is hold on to here for a couple of seconds and you see this little LED turns on you're now in setting the time thing the um, the ultimate timeout for it which is which is to 20 minutes by default and we can cycle through again so we've got one beep two beeps three beeps and each of those beeps as I said the default is one beep for 20 minutes two beeps for 40 minutes three beeps for 60 minutes uh, and you might need three beeps if you're like in a plane or something but on a quad I tend to think that a single beep is fine now let me just turn it back off and on again so you can see the difference when it powers up it's um, it's telling you different things so obviously when it's on you can see the little green LED and when we move it we should see the blue LED flash and when we stop moving it and keep very still it will stop flashing so yes the idea is if this then stops moving for that 30 seconds or it's on for more than 20 minutes it will alarm and if you just then tie this to a quad as before then it'll basically go off and you'll save it so the question is how loud is this and the answer to that question is about 90 decibels when it was back there obviously I moved it a bit closer but yeah it's pretty loud and certainly as loud as the other ones so in thinking about ways of testing this little drone keeper mini 2 which I've just had on my quad and it was all good I didn't need though it's turning it on I thought I don't want to put another quad down and I want to go home and have some lunch but I could test this quickly just by losing it in the grass without a quad because if you ever lost things in just this much grass it will disappear so if I get this and chuck it uh, I mean it didn't go very far but if we now wait 30 seconds what we should get is a beep I'll tell you what I wouldn't like to try and find that if it didn't beep I did turn it on didn't I oh I hope you can hear that it's pretty damn loud turn the mic in that direction does a pretty good job of letting you pinpoint something very small like that so on a quad it's a lot easier anyway that's my practical test well there are two types of lost model beepers in the world um, one that works on this with the accelerometer and ones like the Hellgate which you wire physically into your quad now I do really like these ones because I tend to have a lot of quads that I fly and I haven't got that many um, Hellgate style lost model beepers to put in all of them so it's very easy for me to just attach this to a battery um, and go out and fly and, and come back. Now the, half the reason for that test although it's a little bit sort of tongue-in-cheek and I didn't really feel like putting a quad down again was a lot of people have said oh if you attach it to the battery what if it comes off and this has done several times you know I've gone through trees I've you know when you sort of catch something and but you're still in the air you're like oh that was a lucky escape and this has come off and I've landed and then I hear this beeping as like oh it's come off I'll go and get it and you can literally pinpoint this tiny thing in a field full of long grass so it's absolutely no hassle getting your quad back even when I crash and it's not that often the battery comes out I'm quite good at getting them tightly in and I don't have many massive smashes um, even when 
my battery doesn't come off and I've crashed. It's often the case I will hear this way before I hear my own beeper. So the, the loudness is uh, very good and that's come out really nicely here. So certainly a lot of good improvements that Nishmol have made. The, the fact they've got a standard USB port for charging where the previous one didn't. The fact they've included something you can either plug into a wired mode uh, and use a PWM signal um, and be able to change the settings with it is a, is a real upgrade to what they've done before. Um, I mean you have to get yourself a rechargeable little cell but that's battery restrictions for you. Yeah, sure, it might be better if you had a little LiPo battery in there, but they can't ship it, so there you go. I haven't I haven't really touched on the wide mode um, because I'm, I'm kind of thinking, uh, for my use, is in quads. If you were to put it into PWM mode, basically, you plug this in, that goes to um, a spare channel, and if that loses a PWM signal, that is another way where it will alarm instead of just alarming if the battery disconnects. It doesn't work with Betaflight though, it doesn't work as a Betaflight buzzer, that maybe they'll look into that in the future. Um, but I kind of think that this isn't something you'd wire into a quad, it's something you'd, you'd just attach to a quad and be able to move around anyway. But there you go, this is the Drone Keeper Mini 2, and links of course you can find below to where you can find it and check it out. And I hope that was helpful, I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.